The Self Made Life Podcast is a podcast for entrepreneurs by entrepreneurs. I'm here to inspire small, local, and creative businesses along their journey to success. I'll share a behind the scenes look at what it's like to run and scale a business, branding tips, and I'll also be chatting with other entrepreneurs to share their stories and what it's like to be self made. Welcome back to the Self Made Life Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Wyatt from Monarch Design Co. And today I am here with Megan. And I'm so excited to have Megan on. She will introduce herself in a second, but she is a beauty expert. And I'm so excited to talk, you know, all things beauty and just, you know, dive more into like the service-based business. So before we get started, we're going to do a boss or bust. So sharing something that you're proud of, or maybe something that didn't quite go as planned for you this week. So Megan, do you have a boss or a bust moment? Not to like start it out on a downer, but it was definitely a bust week. I ended up with the flu oh. and had like two full days of clients that I had to reschedule. So definitely did not go as planned, but we're on the mend. My voice does not normally sound like this. So that's like the last piece to like, you know, improve on. Oh, no. Well, I'm glad that you're feeling a bit better and on the mend. I know that there is a nasty bug going around. I mean, it is the season, flu season. Not so gross. <laughs> and okay, but everyone around me has basically been sick. So let's hope that, you know, that I don't get anything. Do I have a boss or bus moment? I want to share a bus, but I'm going to try to be more positive and I can share <laughs> a boss, uh, which is I started working with a new client on her website and she later realized that she also can benefit from a brand refresh and nice. some social media assistance. So yeah, super excited to work with her. Actually, she is within the beauty industry as well. So okay, I'm awesome. More. She's located in Ontario. Megan, you are in, remind me, North Carolina? I'm in Indiana. So Indiana. I'm in the States. Yeah. Okay. So it'll be interesting to kind of like hear your take on the beauty industry in Indiana and in the States. Our listeners are all over the place. So if you're tuning in from the U.S., this episode is for you. But also if you're not, that's okay, because I'm sure you will have a lot of takeaways from this episode. So with that being said, let's get started. So Megan, tell us who you are, what you do, a little bit more about your business and how you got into entrepreneurship. Okay, this is going to be a really long-winded answer. Hi, I'm Megan. So I own the Glow Lounge, which is my corrective skin spa. So again, I'm in Indiana. I'm in the Midwest in the U.S. So if you know anything about the U.S., we're kind of like middle of the country, basically. Lots of cornfields. That's what we're known for in Indiana is corn and racing. If you like like the Indy 500, you know, car races, stuff like that. That's the other big thing that we're known for. So not really anything exciting here, but I've been in the industry almost 12 years now. I went to business school right out of high school, got a business degree, and then I went to um, beauty school to get my aesthetics license. But honestly, I just went to beauty school to learn how to do makeup. I wanted to be a professional makeup artist. I did that for, oh my gosh, probably about eight years. I freelanced in professional makeup artistry. But in the States, every state has a different licensure requirement for whatever it is that you want to do. And in Indiana, to be able to take actual money for doing makeup, I had to do either cosmetology, so hair or aesthetics for skin. And I didn't want anything to do with hair. Hair is a very long program. It's in Indiana, it's a 1500 hour licensing requirement. And I knew that I was going to have to work too. So it would have taken me probably close to two years to get a cosmetology license. And I was not going to school for that long. So we did skincare (laughs) and I went to school thinking that I was going to learn way more about makeup. You learn nothing about makeup when you are going to school for skincare, but it ended up being a, a great compliment because you learn so much about the skin and the body and just kind of how to manipulate the skin. And it is a great compliment to makeup. Uh, That feels like so, so long ago now. I worked at a couple of different spas right out of school. And I just really quickly realized that it was 
not for me working for like a large corporate owned spa. I don't take micromanaging well. I'll just say that. Like I've known since I was 15 that I needed to have my own business at some point. But after a couple of years of dealing with that, I was just like, no, I'm not doing it anymore. So I went full-time into freelance makeup. And then I was also working a full-time office job on the side. So I was usually doing like Monday through Friday at the office and I would turn around and do like wedding makeup or I'd be on photo shoots at night or on the weekends. I did that for years. In 2016, I became fully self-employed, which was a really big deal for me. That had been what I'd been working towards for like six years at that point. And I still remember my first day, people were like, are you okay? I'm like, I'm like in shock that I'm like, I can just do whatever I want right now and no one will tell me anything. (laughs) Like that was my whole goal was to be able to like, just do what I wanted on my own terms. So let me think. Then in 2019, I opened up the Glow Lounge. It started as a little bitty treatment room in my home, just doing facials out of my house. And I segued into my first commercial location in 20, oh my gosh, 2020. Yeah. It was right after we came back from lockdowns here in the US that I opened up my first commercial location. And then a year later, I moved into a lot bigger space where I'm still at now. And then this year, I transitioned also into business coaching for BD entrepreneurs as well. So that's just like a really, really fast synopsis of the last almost 12 years. (laughs) Wow. I love that. And I always love hearing everyone's journey because like where you think you want to be, you don't always end up in life kind of, you know, not at all. (laughs) And then you're like, oh, well, maybe this is what I want to do. So I love, you know, seeing everything that you're doing, you know, in the, the coaching world for beauty experts. I think that is definitely a need, especially for that market, because like you said, you went to school for business and then you went and did cosmetology, but you know, now you're kind of like bridging all of your experiences, real life experience, business experience and everything in between to really bring value to those in the beauty industry and and helping them to grow like you have. Like, yes, I went to business school, but I'm going to tell you like, I could have just thrown that out the door. Like you don't learn anything about running a business in business school. You only learn about running a business while you're in it and doing it. So, and I think there are so many girls that go to beauty school, just thinking that they're going to come out and they're going to like start their own businesses. And that's great, but they don't teach you anything about going out as a solo service provider on your own. Those are the people that I really wanted to be able to help or the ones that just have no idea about anything about running a business. Yeah, I love that. And it's so true with like many, you know, service or product based businesses. There's no manual, you kind of live and you learn. And that's why we do this podcast is so that we can share other people's experiences to help you along your journey. So really happy to have Megan on. Uh, let's chat everything beauty industry. You know, over the past like 12 odd years, you've probably seen a lot of things come and go like with trends in both makeup and skincare. How do you kind of stay on top of those trends and how do you maybe like debunk some of the not so great trends that are now circling so widely on social media? So trends were super important when I was working very heavily in makeup. So because you would have clients that would be like, hey, did you see so-and-so on the red carpet at the award show last weekend? I want that look. So when I was really heavily working in makeup, that was really important. But now I consider myself a retired makeup artist, so I don't actively take makeup clients anymore. So I really don't focus so much on the trends now. I think it's super important to have your own style. You have your own, you know, classic look, whatever it is that you like, and you run with it. I always hated seeing clients that were like, well, this is trendy, so I'm going to try this. And I'd be like, well, it's not going to look good on you. Like it's, it's not a trend for everyone. Trends are for a reason, you know, it's to get the likes, it's to get the looks, it's to get the pictures, you know, all of that stuff. But at the end of the day, is it really a look that you like? 
and working with women, it was very, very obvious while doing makeup. I would know immediately the women that were extremely self-conscious about themselves because they would hate everything about the makeup, regardless of how it turned out. So I think when you look at trends, it's really important to ask yourself, does this vibrate with who I am as a person, basically? And if you ask yourself that, most trends are going to be like, no, that's not me, like at all. But in the world of skincare, so there are obviously a million different trends that float around on TikTok all the time of, you know, let's freeze this cucumber and like put it all over our face or let's wash our face with dandruff shampoo. Like, oh, no, gross. let's just go see an esthetician. Like that is always my advice to anyone, not a dermatologist. So I don't know how it is in Canada, but in the States, usually if someone has problematic skin or they're wanting to fix something about their skin, they typically will see a dermatologist before they see an esthetician. And in the States, dermatologists will typically just give them like a topical prescription and they're going to send them out the door and clients will leave thinking, you know, Hey, like this is, this is going to make my skin better but it doesn't because it's literally a band-aid for, you know, a molehill typically. So what I really specialize in is getting clients on a customized routine for home care. And that's something that literally everyone needs. So when you're watching TikTok and people are like, oh, do this, do this, don't, please, please do not do that. I don't care what it is, just don't. Because chances are, even if it works for them, it's not going to work for you because everyone's skin is so unique. Everyone's skin needs vastly different things. It's going to be affected by very different things. So if it works for them, great, but please do not assume that it's going to work for you. And it's probably going to fuck your skin up. Excuse my language. <laughs> so just be careful when it's like the new viral skin trend. That does not mean that it's a good thing by any means. It basically means someone is doing something for the likes and views. Hey, did you know that consistent brand presentation across all platforms can increase your revenue by up to 23%? That's a 23% raise. Are you a service or product-based business owner looking to level up your brand in 2023? Over the years, maybe your business and experience has grown and you need a platform that reflects the quality of your work and services. Or maybe you're just starting out and want to build that solid foundation for a successful business. The time has come to invest in your business. Team up with Monarch Design Co. to create a powerful brand for your business and product that reflects your values and has a lasting impression on your ideal clients. Monarch Design Co. is currently booking branding and web design services for January 2023 and beyond. Spaces are limited, so don't delay. Head on over to the link in our show notes to book a free strategy call to see how we can help you grow and spread your wings. Make 2023 your year by increasing your revenue and booking out with more of your dream clients. So stay away from scary trends and focus on, you know, seeing an expert, seeing an esthetician, and really, you know, talking through your goals and working together to achieve those, whether that's through multiple treatment packages or, you know, consistent facials or whatever. Yeah, I mean, everybody needs a facial every four to six weeks, like regardless, because your skin is constantly dying. It sounds really, really gross, but your skin cells are constantly dying and shedding and they need to be removed you need hydration, you need exfoliation. The life cycle of a standard facial is really only about 28 to 36 days, depending on the person. So if you're getting a facial once a year, that's great, but it's not doing anything for your skin health. It's just basically helping you feel better about yourself, if that makes sense. But your home care is really what makes all the difference in the world because it matters way more what you're doing every single day than what you're doing once every couple months, right? So having something that's very tailored to you, your current skin goals, and what you want to look like in another 10 years, honestly, that's going to make all the difference in the world. I love that. I so badly need to book a facial. I've been like on the fence because I'm expecting, so I need to be careful with certain things, but absolutely. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah. But on my like day and evening routine at home, I feel like are pretty good. But it's all about like finding that balance and finding like what works right for you, right? What works well for you and, you know, quality product. So that's the other thing. It's so easy to walk into, you know, like Sephora or Ulta or go online and just like add some stuff to your cart and kind of like hope and pray that it's going to work. And God help you if you've talked to a sales associate, like their whole job is to sell you product, not to really educate you on what your skin needs. So it can be a lot of guesswork. That's why I always just say, just see an esthetician, invest in professional grade product, because that right there will make the biggest difference in your skin. Yeah, I love that. So speaking of, you know, business and getting back into that, how do you create consistency in your business as a service-based professional? trying to get people on board with, you know, regular facials, regular services. Yeah. So for me, what I do, I'm very corrective with my skincare. So that requires clients to be in minimum every four to six weeks. So I am a very straightforward person. And what I find in the beauty industry, especially if girls are newer, they're coming out of school, they're not really sure how to do things. They're very hesitant to really be straightforward with clients. Say, tell them, this is what you need. This is what is going to make the difference. Do you want this? Yes or no. A lot of people will beat around the bush with things, but for me, it all comes down to the client consultation. So let's say that you schedule a new facial somewhere, right? You don't want to just walk in and lay down and have them do the facial and say, okay, great. Thanks. Bye. And send you out the door, right? You want like a plan of action. So when clients come in, I am again, extremely straightforward with them. I will ask them so many questions like, what is your lifestyle? How much time do you have to commit to your skincare routine? What are your current skin issues? What do you want to look like in another 10 years? What current skincare do you have at home right now? What's working for you? What do you feel like isn't working for you? Your diet, your exercise, your sleep, your stress levels, your hormones, your medications, supplements, laundry detergent, the quality of your water, literally everything goes into your skin health. And if you don't actively educate clients a lot and very consistently, they're going to get lost in the shuffle and they're probably not going to come back. I always tell people every time you see a client, try and give them a little nugget of education somewhere. And especially the first time someone comes to see you, they need to leave with a brain full of skin education and tips. They should walk out saying like, whoa, I learned so much. Education will keep people coming back every single time because they basically feel like they're getting all of this stuff almost for free, basically. And this isn't information that they're going to find on TikTok. It's not going to be on Google. It's going to be straight from the mouth of a professional. So being extremely informative and not being afraid to tell clients what they need either, because most people have no freaking idea what their skin needs. They'll be like, oh, I want to do, you know, microdermabrasion. And I'll be like, nope, we're not doing that because that's not what your skin needs. You have to be extremely open and honest with people and set the expectation right off the bat. I always tell people there's no day where you're going to be like, my skin is perfect. I get to stop everything that I've been doing. And we've reached that point. There is no end point. The whole goal is to get clients into a new routine for the rest of their lives. So they understand better how their skin operates. And if you aren't having these conversations with clients as a beauty industry professional, you're doing them a disservice. Like you're leaving them wanting more, whether they realize it or not. That's the best way to create consistency because it creates trust with the client. Yeah, I love that. And, you know, it's that give, give, get, right? Like the more you give, the more you give, they're like, okay, take my money. But like they're making a a more informed decision because they're realizing the importance of that service, product, et cetera. Yes. I mean, my initial client appointments, like 
they leave with so much information. And I always, I send them with an email that has a breakdown of what they should be doing at home, a customized regimen full of products that they should look into starting to use. I mean, they get so much, like you said, give, 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 ask. So if I know that someone needs a very high dollar treatment, I'm going to make sure that they know all of the pros, all of the cons, you know, what it's going to do for them in the future. And then I will sell it to them with that, because if you immediately go into it, what I find with a lot of new girls in the industry is if you try to sell a high dollar treatment right off the bat, they're not going to want to do it, right? Because they're new. They don't really know too much yet. But if you're constantly educating and giving so much back to the client, then you're not even going to have to sell it. Like it's going to sell itself. That's the cool part. Uh huh. Yeah. Love that. Okay. So, you know, you've grown your business over the past couple of years. You've gone from, you know, doing it out of your own space into a commercial space and into like a larger commercial space. What has been like your biggest challenges when it comes to running a beauty service business, especially like through the pandemic? Oof. The <laughs> pandemic was rough. So, where I live basically, so we're in one big county in the middle of the state. And then there are lots of other different little counties around us. The particular county that I live in was forced to stay closed for almost two and a half months longer than any of the surrounding counties. So a lot of beauty service providers were seeing their clients just drive 15 minutes to another county to get their hair done. So it was extremely difficult at that point in time. I relied heavily on, again, educating people through social media and selling products, selling gift certificates. I had a plan coming out of it and I just like hit the ground running fast and hard as soon as we were legally able to go back to work again. But the biggest issue has and always will be policies and boundaries with clients. This is something that I teach so much of in my mentoring program, because it's one of those things that, again, nobody teaches, nobody trains on. And if you don't have policies and boundaries, you're not going to have a business and you're not going to have a life. So for me, it's no, it, it's not fun. And a lot of times it's awkward. And a lot of girls don't know how to have these conversations with clients, but rock solid policies and not responding to client messages at nine o'clock at night, like that will change your life. But you also have to be willing to have those conversations and be very straightforward with clients because otherwise they will walk all over you. And I only know that from experience. So if you aren't setting the bar very high from the very start, you're going to regret it. <laughs> yep. I feel like that is definitely something that happens in my industry as well and you know boundaries are so important not just for you know keeping everything on track but also like keeping your mental health in, in check too yeah i mean just because you own a business does not mean that you are at everyone's beck and call 24 7 like that's just not how it works like you don't get to call your doctor's office at midnight and get a response like yeah we are no different. Like you don't get to do that. Yeah. Keeping things really professional is definitely key. Okay. I need to take a little break and just share one of our favorite tools, which is HoneyBook. So HoneyBook is our CRM system and we really can't live without it. We have been using it for the past almost four years and it's been like life-changing in our business. So from leads um, that kind of filter through our website form, it kind of populates into a new project for us and seamlessly we can send proposals, we can schedule calls, we can send over invoices, contracts, orders. and what I love most about it is it's just so easy on the client end and we are able to get paid quickly and efficiently and we're able to keep everything together in one easy and simple to use spot. So if you are looking for a client management system, 
I highly recommend HoneyBook. It has been a total game changer in our business, and I have no doubt that it'll be a total game changer for you too. So if you want to use our exclusive 50% off your first year, you can head over to our website, themonarchdesign.co forward slash resources and click get 50% off HoneyBook and start utilizing your time better. This thing has literally changed our lives and I wouldn't be sharing it if I wasn't like raving about it. So definitely give it a try. Let me know what you think. I also wanted to mention they have a setup concierge. So in I think your first like week or so, you're able to work with someone directly in HoneyBook and they're able to set up everything for you. They're able to set up your contract, all your your files, all your services, your pricing, so that literally when you go to send a proposal or invoice, it is so simple. You can also work with workflows so you can schedule emails, you can put together workflows so that like, let's say you are working with a wedding client and you know, you want to send them a questionnaire or timeline schedule for like two weeks before their event, you can definitely schedule, send that and put together a workflow so that you're you're kind of working smarter and not harder. So HoneyBook has done more than just save me time. It helps me to get paid quicker and also look really professional when working with my clients. You know, it's easy for them to get the proposal, get the contract, sign the document, and I'm able to get paid quickly and efficiently. So check out HoneyBook and go over to our website, themonarchdesign.co forward slash resources and click on the link, get 50% off HoneyBook today. So what would you say is your top three takeaway tips for someone who might be wanting to start their own beauty business? And what are some of the things that you wish you knew while you were starting your own journey? So oh, first things first, I would say get some experience. So like I said, a lot of girls come fresh out of school and they want to immediately, you know, start their own treatment room, which is awesome. I love the entrepreneurial mindset, but it's also extremely difficult to do that right out of school with no clientele, no experience. I always tell girls, get at least a year of experience somewhere. Maybe you want to specialize in like waxing. So I would work at one of the franchise chain waxing places just so you understand how to do the service consistently. You're going to learn how to do it really fast. You're going to learn how to do it well. You're going to learn about dealing with clients. You're going to learn about, you know, checking them out. You're going to learn booking people. You're going to learn just kind of the overall workflow. And you're also building up your own clientele too. So when you are ready to leave, you can tell those people, you know, some places are a little iffy about that, but I always say, try and take people with you when you leave, because generally places like that aren't really super concerned with the service provider. Girls generally don't get treated the best, which is why a lot of people leave to start their own businesses, but get experience for at least a year somewhere in whatever field that you really want to be in. Secondly, save money because it is very costly running a beauty business because there is a lot of overhead involved, especially if you are an esthetician, you're going to have so like so much overhead. I can't even tell you, you're going to have rent. Your supply costs are going to be through the roof. You are going to need to save a good amount of money before you even think about looking for a place to open up to call your own. And third, you need a freaking plan. This is the other thing. Girls come out and they'll open their treatment room and they'll be like, I'm taking clients. It's like, okay, but do you have any sort of like plan outside of like, you're open for business now? Like what, you need to know how many clients do you need to have a week to pay your rent? How many clients do you need to have a month to take care of your own bills? What's your six month plan? What's your one year plan? Like this is something that so many people don't think about. They get the social media, you know, they get their Instagram handle. But then outside of that, it's like, okay, I'm open for business. Great. Now what? 
Like you cannot just be sitting and waiting for people to come through your doors. This is why so many beauty service providers fail. This is why so many of those businesses close so quickly because nobody has a marketing plan and nobody has money saved up to get them through those rough couple months too. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, it's like any business you, and like for the beauty business, especially because there is overhead and there are other things that you need to consider, but having that nice nest egg to kind of get you started and a plan and just so that you have something moving forward. Yes. Yep. All right. Well, thanks so much for sharing all of that. I think it's really helpful for anyone who is wanting to get into aesthetics or a beauty-based business. There's a lot of different things to consider for getting started. And I loved that piece of advice of, you know, getting experience before going out on your own, like learning on someone else's dime, because you will learn so much more in that time than you would on your own and you can make mistakes on their dime, not yours. So super helpful. So we are going to end off with a rapid fire, this or that. And then we're going to do a plug where listener, you can let us know where listeners can find you. So I'm going to say two things. And you're going to say which one comes to mind first. Are you ready? Yep. <laughs> okay. Country or city? Country, always. Mountains or beach? Ooh, both. I love them both. Okay. Coffee or tea? Coffee, always. Tacos or sushi? Ooh, tacos. Podcasts or audiobooks? Oh, there's a time and a place for both, but usually audiobooks for me, honestly. Call or text? Text. Do not call me. <laughs> Amazing. So tell us where can our listeners find you online and how can they work with you either through your services or your mentoring program? Yeah, so I actually have two Instagrams. My spa is at the Glow Lounge Indie. And then my mentoring business is at the Badass Beauty Boss. And you can find both of my profiles through, you know, each one on Instagram. They're both linked. If you are interested in mentoring services, obviously just shoot me an email or you can DM me through Instagram, either one too. And your podcast? Yes, and my podcast, The Make It Glow Show. And Ash is actually going to be a guest on it so we're kind of tradesies here but I try and just have like all free information on my podcast just for entrepreneurs and especially if you are in the beauty industry and you need information you're craving education go there go listen to everything amazing so definitely go check that out and then also go check out her podcast for my interview which is up next coming up Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Megan, for thanks, being on the show. And we'll chat soon. Bye. Bye. Hey, before you go, I just want to express my gratitude for sticking around and being here and just listening to this podcast. I would so, so appreciate it if you could leave a rating and review, subscribe to the podcast, and Tell your friends and family about it. Share on social media. The more and more that we get these reviews, we get these feedbacks from you, and the more you share, the more that we're able to reach like-minded listeners just like you and help to provide more value. So I would just so, so appreciate it if you could share away. And yeah, thanks so much for being here.